Hey there, once again, YouTube. Yes, I know, this is the second video of today. Well, I wanted to take a look at something real quick. First off, we did have a magnitude right near the Fish Lake Fault Valley Fault Zone, but on the border of California and Nevada. We had a magnitude 3.4 and 0.4 kilometers in depth. Pretty shallow, multiple people did feel it. And then we had a magnitude 3.7 off the coast right here, just to the west of Los Angeles. So, just in the past few days, we have seen a good amount of seismicity. Remember, um, not last video, but the video before that, there was an interesting increase in seismicity. At, what was it? June 10th, I think it was. June 9th or June 10th, I forget the exact date it was when it happened. Within 20 minutes or so, there, there was a magnitude 4.1 over here, then 4.1 up here, many, many aftershocks in this location as well, then a 3.5 near San Francisco, multiple events. So it does seem like seismicity could be slowly heating up for California and Nevada. That is not what I want to talk about today. Do you remember that magnitude 4.0 in Hawaii, uh, oh, not Hawaii, the magnitude 4.0 in Ohio just, uh, what, four or five days ago or so? Well, let's go over here. We have, I don't know if you can see it or not, let me zoom in. We have another earthquake on the eastern section of the United States on the east coast in Pennsylvania. The magnitude 4.0 in Ohio occurred right in this location, right on the southern shores of Lake Erie near Cleveland. I believe it was right here, but... Just at about, I'm going to say, what is that, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, which would be, let's see, 5, 4, 3, 2, what is that? Oh, man, that's three hours difference for East Coast time, right? So that's what, like 8 p.m.? 8 p.m. Eastern time or something like that. So around 8.30 p.m. Eastern time for this location right here, we did see a magnitude 3.4 at 26.7 kilometers in depth. Right in central, the southern section of central Pennsylvania, right down here. Let's click on the event page, see if anybody felt it. There was actually an aftershock, but the aftershock was not felt. A little bit deeper and much smaller. Over 1,176 people reported feeling this magnitude 3.4 at 26.7 kilometers in depth. Wow. Wow, guys, that's pretty crazy. Let's go to the Did You Feel It map and see how far away people actually felt this event. So what do you guys think about the increase in seismicity lately? I mean, not just on the West Coast, but the East Coast as well. I mean, California, Nevada, lighting up like Christmas that one night. I mean, you should have seen my earthquake app on my phone. I mean, it was like red dot, red dot, red dot, like these huge red dots. I'm like, oh man, what happened? Uh, yeah, so something's definitely going on. We do are seeing a little bit of an increase in seismicity for the United States, especially on the East Coast. Having a 4.0 in near Cleveland, Ohio isn't too, too rare. But the thing that is odd is having a 3.4 just a few days later in Pennsylvania. That's kind of weird. You know, usually we don't see that. But then again, Washington, D.C., a few years back, and I don't remember exactly how many years, did get struck by a 6.0. And that was crazy, crazy. I think it damaged the Washington Monument. And also, guys, just a heads up, the La Brea Tar Pits, infamous in the movie Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones, actually had a tar eruption. Now, tar eruptions, very small ones, do occur at the tar pits. However, <clears throat> according to the reports, um, the opposite side of the street broke open. Like this little tiny fissure near the sidewalk broke open and started spewing tar. Isn't that weird? I checked for local seismicity around that area. Couldn't find anything. Not much at all since about February. There were two quakes at the Liberate Tar Pits in February. But after that, I couldn't find much. You can use the earthquake catalog if you want from USGS. Getting off topic. But, so we are seeing some strange stuff. A lot of people felt it all around the area. Over a thousand people reported feeling this magnitude 3.4 in Pennsylvania. Again, at 26.7 kilometers in depth. Let's go to the earthquake catalog. This is set to all magnitudes since 1980 to right now, 8.21 p.m. Pacific time, June 12, 2019. And we see Pennsylvania is right here. We have a few mine blasts, a rock burst from a long time ago. The magnitude 3.4 today is the fourth largest event to occur in this area since, what is that? Since 1980, yeah. So the three other largest ones were in 1984, which was a 4.2 at 5 kilometers in depth. And then in 1994, we had a 4.2 at 5 kilometers in depth. And then on that same day, they had a 4.6 at 5 kilometers in depth. And that was located in this batch of seismicity right here, which is closer to the Ramapo Fault. Please... Forgive me if I said that incorrectly. The Ramapo Fault, don't know how to say it, but 3.4. Now, the other 3.4 that did occur since 1980 was in 2008 on December 27th, and you can tell it goes down from there because I have the largest magnitudes up here. Again, this is all magnitudes since 1980 to right now, 
Again, this is one of the largest earthquakes to hit Pennsylvania for a long, long time, guys. It's been many years since 2008. And if you want to find one larger, you have to go all the way back to 1984 and 1994. Very interesting. Now, the 2008 magnitude 3.4, let's see how many felt reports. Let's see here. 5,328. So the 3.4 that occurred today might eventually make it there because this 3.4 just occurred a few hours ago, guys. It's not like it's... It's super old, you know what I mean? So we still have felt reports coming in. Let's check out the event page one last time. 1,182. So maybe it was not as... They're still both 3.4s, but this one was a little bit deeper. So it'll be felt a little bit farther away from the epicenter, but it won't be felt as strong. So not as many people will feel it. So very, very interesting, guys. Very, very interesting. What's up with the increase in seismicity lately, though? What is up with it? And just for a heads up, we do have right here from ABC News, they have mopped the Ramapo Fault and uh, from USGS as well and the local geological surveys in this area. The Ramapo Fault is actually, I think it's a little bit larger than this and actually starts to curve down south. But the earthquake that occurred today, let's see, right here, New Jersey's right there. I'm going to say, I'm going to say the earthquake probably occurred right in this location. So kind of near the Ramapo Fault. Kind of near it. Let's do a little bit. Let's see here. Let's get a better look. Actually, right in this location, right about here is where the magnitude 3.4 hit. So not really on the Ramapo Fault, but it is pretty close to it. And I don't think there's any other faults located in this area at all. I tried looking. I just did a brief, brief uh, research on this because this I just noticed it. I wanted to get this out, to, out there to you guys. So, why don't we go take a look at the seismic data in the seismic program swarm and take a look at what this magnitude 3.4 looked like via the closest, or the data from the closest seismic station. So, here we are in the seismic program swarm with the most recent data stream taken from station PLAB in the PE network, no location code given, broadband vertical. Since it's a broadband channel, I did add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. And here it is right here. Here is the magnitude 3.4 in Pennsylvania that looks very odd. Very strange looking earthquakes uh, occurring lately, guys. Just strange. In my opinion, look at how far the PNS wave arrivals are. Look at that. I don't know. It just looks weird to me, in my opinion. And here's a spectrogram plot of the event. Notice that the PNS wave arrivals are so separated that it almost looks like two events. Obviously, they're not. It's just one event. But that's probably due to how deep it was. And look how long the shaking lasted. It lasted a good amount of time, guys. So if anybody felt this earthquake, please let me know in the comments section below. Let's check out the dominant frequencies of the PNS wave just real fast. That's weird. Whoops. Wow. Okay, that's weird. Well, I guess we do have some very sloped, steady, dominant low frequencies between about 1.7 hertz and dying down at about 6.4 hertz. Of course, this is not a low frequency earthquake, but we do see some strengths well, well beyond that. But I just thought that was very odd, guys. Very, very odd. Now let's scoot forward, shall we? Let's zoom out a little bit. See if we can find any aftershocks. But so you have reported one aftershock. That's not it. That does not look like an earthquake, that's for sure. Going forward, I believe the reported aftershocks down here. We'll get to that in just a second. Keep going forward, going forward. Nope, not seeing too much that look like earthquakes. Those could be earthquakes. Eh, maybe, though. I don't know. Not for sure. These definitely look like earthquakes, though. This does, except I don't know why it looks like that. I don't know. That's strange. Some strange-looking seismic events the past week or so, guys. Now, here is the aftershock. They're reporting it as a... What was it? Drum roll, please. It was a magnitude 1.4 at 28.7 kilometers in depth, so a little bit deeper, basically right in the same location as the main shock, the magnitude 3.4. And that's pretty much it, guys. Not really seeing... Don't know what this is, though. Frequencies are a little too high to be considered a low-frequency event. I don't know what that is. That's very interesting. So we are seeing some interesting events on the East Coast as well as the West Coast, just in the past week, as of the Glen Avon Swarm calming down. I mean, we thought the Glen Avon Swarm was crazy. Ha! <laughs> you haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it for right now. Just want to bring this to your attention that we do yet ha have yet another earthquake on the East Coast. Um, I am 
I was doing my analysis page before I saw this. Then I saw this pop up on my Earthquake app. And I was like, oh, got to do a video about this. So I am working right now on my Earthquake analysis page for the Yellowstone Rapid Fire Earthquake Swarm that occurred last night. And that will be up probably by tomorrow morning. But just in case if it isn't, just go to the description box below, look at the links section, and look for right there. If it's not up, then it'll say it's not up. You know, you just click on the link, and it'll lead you right to there. Um, but it should be up either by midnight tonight or 12 p.m. tomorrow. So just keep an eye out for that, and I'll add some seismic audio to that. I hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and let's hope no more earthquakes happen. I mean, maybe some small, strange ones. That'd be nice, because I need something to keep me busy a little bit. <laughs> Not like I'm already busy enough. Jeez. Well, I hope you guys have a blessed night. See you later.